as I drove to the church from our place over in the grove, I saw all the flags along the sidewalks. It reminded me that uh, we've had a split 4th of July celebration. Normally we have a three day weekend, but this way we've got the 4th of July in the middle and we're celebrating before and we're still celebrating afterwards. And so it's really a much longer vacation that we get to celebrate our nation. We get to celebrate our independence and we get to wave the flag. So it's happy birthday again. And this has a bearing on my sermon somewhere in there, but today in the reading, the first portion of the reading, Jesus is like a person who comes home after a long journey. He may have been expecting a break in his busy life. So he returns to Nazareth after some doing some amazing things in around the Sea of Galilee. On the Gentile side of the great body of water, he calmed a storm and healed a man beset by a legion of demons. In that story, the demons settled in, into a herd of pigs, which destroyed themselves rather than being a host to demons, which seriously set back the economy in that particular area. And the residents asked him to leave and never return. On the Jewish side of the lake, Jesus healed Jairus's daughter, who some said was already dead, and a woman with a hemorrhage, who some said she was not really that sick. Today, Jesus, as I said, comes home and it's to a town of around 500 to 1,000 citizens. He was raised there working as a tecton, which means a skilled person. He was a maker of furniture and plows and tools. He was neither a rich man nor a poor man. He returns in the company of all of his disciples, no doubt some of them from Capernaum, the city close by where he had been living. And Jesus was now a rabbi, known in Jerusalem and beyond. As a celebrity, he was asked to teach in the synagogue which was an invitation commonly extended to visiting famous people. And at first the people admit his teachings are amazing. But then they begin to grumble. They call him Mary's son, not Joseph's son. They murmur among themselves who does he think he is? We know his mother, his sisters and his brothers. Mark's gospel does not say what Jesus taught, but Luke's does. And Luke says he reads from Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me to bring news, good news to the poor, proclaim release of the captives, to let the oppressed go free, and proclaim the day of God's favor. If I imagine myself sitting amongst the crowds and hearing those words, I would rejoice. I'd like to think I would. I would take this message as good news but apparently Jesus' neighbors did not. They must have heard something totally different. They may have heard that Jesus was saying they were poor and they were blind and they were oppressed. And he, Jesus, was there to save them. 
it's a common problem for people. They get offended by someone who's called an expert, who tells them that they need to listen because they have a very important message. And they may have an important message, but they may not. Jesus was not suggesting something radical because the Isaiah passage was known by everyone. And it words mean that God's favor includes all of humanity. And maybe that was the problem. If all of humanity is included, how would things change? Where would I be if all the oppressed people wanted to come to my town? On our holidays, we celebrate our national freedom and our political freedom, which a lot of nations do not have. Jesus was offering freedom. Richard Rohr in his book, The Art of Letting Go says, most of our decisions in life are based on personal preference and choice. This is the life Christians are called to lead. The self that Jesus says must die so that we may fall into our larger life, our true self as God planned. Freedom for Jesus was purely and simply freedom from the self, which is freedom from the world, because the self is all about the world. In order to be free for life, we must quite simply be free from our small, and world-centered selves. Jesus was neither surprised nor upset by what we usually call sin. Jesus was upset at human pain and suffering. What else do all those healing stories mean? Half of the Gospels are healing stories. There must be important for that reason. Jesus did not focus on sin. He went where the pain was. And wherever he found human pain, there he went, there he touched, and there he healed. Today, we generally do not find our Lord's message so very radical. But what if Jesus appeared here, who sat down and read the gospel, the words from Isaiah, and he said something like this, the good news is that God loves Buddhists, God loves Muslims, God loves Hindus, atheists, and agnostics. God has a place in his heart for drug dealers, for convict, convicts, for wife beaters, for the mentally ill. God cares for the naked, the hungry, the unemployed, the money lenders, the bankers, the gun manufacturers, the chemical corporations, and the polluters. God chooses Democrats and Republicans, soldiers and those who refuse to fight, the flag burners, the Confederate flag wavers, and I would add, the Ukrainian flag wavers, the Jewish flag wavers, and the Palestinian flag wavers. God loves them all. Jesus spoke, if Jesus spoke that message from the pulpit, could he heal those of us who needed to be healed? Could he change our minds? Would our faith allow us to let go of the ideas 
that keep us in bondage. Jesus offended people. And my words may offend you too. If they do, I'm sorry. But I will not unsay them. People are offended who are not willing to accept new ideas. In Nazareth, Jesus went to his hometown to give his neighbors the same opportunity he offered to the people in Capernaum and Jerusalem and Jericho. Make a decision, he was saying. Hear my message and listen. We know what their response was that day. But Jesus was not deterred by their rejection. Our Lord left that town and went on to the next and the next. He sent his disciples out to spread the good news, to give an opportunity to any who might respond. And I do not believe the Spirit of God forever turned away from the people of Nazareth if they shook their feet, the dust from their feet off against them. I believe the people who rejected Jesus' message that day had another chance. Only God can say. But if I believe in a God of love and hope, then I must believe there is redemption and salvation for everyone, no matter how I feel. The salvation of God is freedom from fear and hate and anger. And we are not free at all until we are free from ourselves. It's that simple and it's that hard. Amen.